guys. Um, I'll make a start. So, um, yeah, I'm Michael Castellano. Um, I currently work at Hydman at Carlisle, um, and I'd just like to share with you my first year um, of working with Drupal. Um, so, I'm 26 years old. Um, you can get my Twitter um, up on there. Um, I have a foundation degree in computing degree um, and a master's. Um, in IT security, and I have, well, I have, have experience with using Laravel, Ruby on Rails, um, and Django. So, um, starting at Hydrant, I had no experience working with Drupal. So obviously I had um, a lot of experience working in the uh, MVC environment, and Drupal was quite a big learning curve for myself. So basically, I just wanted to share with you guys um, my thoughts and experience from a newbie's point of view, basically. Um, so what I use to work with Drupal, um, I've used Linux distributions, um, and now you basically use my Mac to develop sites. And um, love working with Ubuntu. And um, my main text editor I use is Sublime Text, and I use quite a few. Um, Drupal's um, snippet packages and um, coding standards packages and SFTV um, packages just so I can quickly and efficiently uh, develop. Um, I'm a back end developer by the way, not. So, um, um, I use uh, SQL Pro um, for SSH and into databases. Um, we use Git at uh, Hydrant for versioning control and store all of our uh, source codes on. Um, Bitbucket, um, and I use Gitflow for hotfixes as well. Um, for, so it's just basically a tool for um, quickly creating branches. Um, I use Basecamp um, for managing clients, um, Trello for tasks and workflow maps, workflow maps for logging time, Google Drive, things like that for updating documentation. Um, I used Rust quite a lot for running migrations and running ad hoc scripts and if anything needs to be updated on site. Um, and I use the PHP eval method quite a lot um, when developing and testing methods. Um, to deploy sites from uh, dev to staging and then to live, um, we use a tool called Jenkins, um, which is what I find it to me. Um, so yeah. Um, and a bit good for source code posting. So that's basically um, all the tools and stuff that um, I use at Hydrant um, to help us develop and produce websites. Um, and also, all when developing websites, we um, all all devs basically share a dev environment, um, which can be. Um, a little bit annoying sometimes if we're both working on the same project at the same time. Um, we sometimes use a staging environment depending on if the client um, pays for that. Um, and then we use um, a live environment to deploy. Uh, we're going to start using DigitalOcean um, droplets for basically spinning up websites on demand. And so you only pay for the server hosting when we're actually working on it. Um, so have a uh, provisioning, custom provisioning tool that's getting built by one of our new DevOps staff and that will make that easier. Uh, yeah. um, so this is my first website. Um, so it's not really a good screenshot, but basically it was for the Food Standards Agency. Um, so it was quite daunting um, having just been in for a couple of months um, and getting a website like this. It was quite a big one. Um, and basically it was to provide an assessment tool for um, producers around the UK to complete um, an assessment to make sure that they reduce the risk of like listeria being present in smoked fish. Um, so it basically um, asked users a series of questions where they could answer yes or no to and it would provide feedback throughout the assessment whether or not those producers were doing the right thing. Um, so that was done 
pretty much this time last year. Um, and yeah, it was um, quite a good site. Um, all got completed on time, which was, which was good. And uh, the client was happy. Um, and that's it. And I like to think that I've more saved some lives. I know, helping reduce the risk of bacteria, but that's the proper name to put it there. I'm not going to try and pronounce it. <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, so that's good. Um, so the, here's like a couple of screenshots. And um, so as you can see here, this is where if a user answered the question incorrectly, then it would receive a screen like that. Um, if they answered it correctly, then get a message saying this meets the best better practice guidelines. We got a score at the end. Um, so I have a question that they answered as a um, score value against it. Um, this was all custom, so it was built I built it mainly using like field collections and entity references to to nodes. And um, so not all their producers answering the questions would follow the same path. So it was all dependent on what you answered. Um, so if you answered yes to question two, you could jump to the order of two five five. If you answered, um, if you'd come from Wharton by answering, yeah, you didn't like follow the same path. If that makes sense. So you didn't go from one two three four five to seven eight nine ten. You could jump from question one to question three, question five or whatever, and log how you answered the assessment. So there was quite like a complex matrix that the FSA provided to us. Um, so yeah, they also got a PDF which they could save for and download later. Um, and there was like a breakdown of all the questions and answers at the end of their assessment. So that was quite good. Um, users could create assessments anonymously or create an account, and all this information was recorded. And um, there was actually um, like a scientist uh, working for the FSA who came with uh, came up have means with us that pulls a lot of the data out from the system so that they could like analyze and uh, write reports based on like the assessment So yeah, that was um, um, so I think probably from the most important thing that I got from that um, is that it's important that you understand the client's ethos. And um, it's all good and well saying about understanding the client's needs. Because obviously that, although it can be a difficult process, um, I think it's a lot harder to understand the client's ethos, getting to know what, what they actually want at the end of it, um, basically what their culture is, the era, um, and what their like attitudes and aspirations are. I think that's really important in nailing down because you can add a lot more value um, to, well, from my point of view anyway, developer's point of view. I feel like can add a lot more value to the client as opposed to just getting the job done, if that makes sense. And so that's what I got out of that. Um, and what helped with that, that was provided to me, uh, which was nice, was just the use of personas that I got provided. So I got different personas um, from different people that would be using the tool, and it gave me like, a good idea as to what the, the client actually wanted from different perspectives, not just me with my tunnel vision of, right, okay, this is what it it needs to be like. Um, so I suppose that's the most important thing that I got out of that and what I've applied to future projects. Um, I attended Drupal camps. Um, so yeah, this time last year. Um, we went to Leeds, was it? North East um, and a few others. Um, so yeah. Um, I got quite a bit out of uh, the Drupal camps. Um, how to use vertical tabs. <laughs> that was one, definitely, um, that I took from that. And uh, yeah, I use that pretty much on every website now. <laughs> so, yeah. um, second project that I was put onto, um, that I was working with another developer um, at Hyphen, was to basically build a virtual learning environment for training nurses and doctors. Um, so this was like basically um, an assessment tool which allowed um, administrators of universities across the country to 
be able to create assessments for um, their training doctors and nurses. Um, so, yeah, snap. Um, so these are like a couple of uh, screenshots where admin users, admin users can um, go in and um, manage all assessments. So these are actually assessments where it depends on, well, the students basically have to pass these assessments and basically pass the course. And um, so SNAP provided all the question data, things like that for us to import into the site and uh, they could then go in and create their assessments. And so here we've got basically functionality for them to manage their assessments. You can also assign assessments out to different users that are in the cohort, so not everybody in their uh, university will want to take a particular assessment, so you can assign out um, different assessments to people. So yeah, that was quite good. Some more screenshots. So this form here is quite a big form. Um, it's all custom. Um, I didn't use web form or anything like that. Um, so obviously you can create your assessment title. Um, I use the quiz module um, to basically um, create the quizzes. Um, although it didn't work, had, we did have problems with it. Um, so we had to, um, it didn't work very well with um, lots of taxonomy terms associated to different question types. Um, so we had to like manually um, create, assign quizzes to uh, questions to quizzes, um, but we got it working in the end. So you can have, choose whether or not you have a timed assessment, choose when the assessment's available to the user to take, and um, when it's closed. Do a drill down of what question types you want to appear on the assessment. So I think there was four different um, levels of taxonomy terms that um, admin users could choose from and it would drill down. So say for example, you would have level one questions um, and if you had, I don't know, input number questions or two part answer questions and um, input number questions were part of level one, then it would exclude them. So it would just filter down and you could also choose like um, how many questions of those would be part of that assessment as well, using like a percentage. Um, you could put a pass mark, um, and you could choose whether or not you want to use a calculator or, or what the assessments so, are. Um, pretty complex stuff, but we got it working in the end. Um, that's like an example of a uh, question that appears in the assessment. Um, so we've got hints, what the answer's in, text box for the answer, guns in the answer. The actual question, the ID, just the name <coughs> on those questions. So um, in the quiz module, um, there was only like a couple of uh, question types at the time that were available for us to be able to um, use. So what we did was we extended the uh, quiz question class to basically create our own um, question types that could be used in the assessment. So that gave us like um, quite good flexibility being able to develop new question types. Um, so we're actually in the process of creating like a new question type um, as well. Um, I use views quite a bit for just drilling down as um, which users in which cohort associates to which university, things like that. And um, I found that using a views public operation and writing custom actions um, was really useful to basically form just, I don't know, if somebody needed to be unassigned from an assessment or an assessment needed to be blocked, like its results or anything like that. Um, I didn't have to faff on getting a list of users and um, going through each one and doing that. DBO just did that for me and all I had to do was write one function to basically do what I wanted it to do and that was it. So that was really good. Um, set up feeds as well so that um, their admin users could basically upload um, a, whole load, a whole new set of question types um, and users as well um, so that they can obviously have control as to what what's in their um, website. And so, um, lessons learned with doing this project, so it was a bit different from my first project. Um, so 
I wasn't involved at the beginning on SNAP, and um, so there was very little technical specification, um, and that showed during the development process. And um, so we did some work when the client thought we were doing something else, um, and we could have communicated more with the client to get that, um, but that didn't happen. Um, and probably investigate Drupal contrib modules in, in more depth before committing. Um, as I said before, the quiz module didn't have all the functionality at the time. Um, I know there's more up-to-date versions of the quiz module out there now, which look a lot better, but um, yeah, investigating more time into um, the contrib modules is probably a must. Um, so yeah, that might have saved us pain, or we might have changed the structure of the site. Um, so stats, um, it was released November last year, and um, it's got over 7,000 active um, students logging in. And um, there's, there's over, when I checked, there was 14,500 assessments created, and over 200,000 assessment attempts made by students. So it's quite, it's used quite intensively. And um, so, um, that's that. Um, currently, um, I'm working on building a custom uh, Drupal CRM. Um, it basically integrates with Xero, um, basically a membership management system. Um, and I use the membership entity module quite a lot in managing about 20 different membership types um, for this client. Um, Xero is used for invoicing, so whenever a user is created, their um, address details uh, automatically uh, shipped up into Xero. Um, whenever they buy something, they can choose that they want to pay by invoice. The invoice um, automatically gets raised in Xero. Um, but we don't, I use Q and Cron quite a bit um, to basically batch everything because I hit API limits in Xero when we were migrating loads of data. So I couldn't get all the data in, so everything basically gets stored in like uh, a queue then whenever cron runs, all the users get created, all the invoices get fired up. Um, there's also checks in there to make sure that when invoices are paid, memberships are activated, things like that. Um, there's automatic reminders built in as well, so that um, users get emails automatically um, reminding them when a membership's due for renewal. And it also has zeros as invoice attached to that email. Um, I use that using rules. Um, I think there's another module which allows us to attach uh, attachments to it, so that was pretty neat. I um, had to deal with a large migrate of data, which has taken quite a while, um, from three different systems that their client's currently using. Um, built custom profiles based on membership types, so that's like an admin interface that I've created, which basically lists what field type should display for a user based on the membership. Um, we've got commerce and commerce registration in there as well, so that um, users can go on online bookings um, and uh, buy things basically. Um, there's also discounts and things like that based on membership types. So yeah, that's what um, I'm currently working on. Um, so obviously, all go well, um, and within a year, I, I have had some Drupal frustrations, and um, so documentation is probably one of them. And um, there is some fantastic documentation out there, like the form API documentation. I love that, um, literally because it's clear and concise. But not all modules have um, documentation, and it is really annoying. I have to click around and figure out how, how things work. Um, some modules can be restrictive. Now I love views, don't get me wrong, but sometimes if I need to do something that's complex, um, then I can't do it with views, it's just too restrictive for me. Um, and I end up having to use DB query or DB select, depending on the, what I'm doing basically, mainly with subqueries and things like that, and unions, and I've looked at modules that do that for you, and I'm just like, Myself, just because it's more efficient and there's less overhead basically. It's like I don't like to just install a module, a module just so I can do one thing when I can probably do it using a DB select or DB query or something like that. Um, and um, I know obviously we're going into 
to Drupal 8, which totally addresses this issue, but coming from using Laravel, Ruby on Rails, and Django, um, mainly from uni, um, I don't like how you're not exposed to much object-oriented programming, and it's more of like a procedural um, way, but obviously I know Drupal 8 is going more that way, so it's fine. So that's like a couple of um, Drupal frustrations that I have out. But, obviously, um, I love the way that hooks work, so being able to like, if a node's updated or anything, and or I like that, hook menu, things like that, hook form alters, I don't use them all the time, <laughs> it's basically what I do. Um, form API, like what I said, building custom forms, things like that, that's really useful, um, again with the documentation. Batch API as well, um, on the project that I was working on, I think there was like 38,000 users um, that I had to deal with, and just didn't work, so I had to use Batch API to just basically run a job which um, backs them all up. Um, I love the way that the entities are structured in Drupal, so you know, with different entity types and bundles, things like that, things like that really works very well. Um, taxonomies as well, just for categorizing things. Um, Drupal's Q and Chrome, um, that obviously helped me loads when uh, building the CRM being able to store things in the queue and if you want to deal with them all on one cron run or whatever or 20 then yeah that's awesome and um, db log the reporting of drupal throwing any errors warning warnings using the watchdog method all that gives me great and easy visibility as to what's going on my code so i can check to make sure there's no errors or warnings or anything like that um, and finally rush logging into the terminal and using brush for things. It's just really, really good, clearing the cache and things like that. It's just so much better than having to click and wait for screens to load and just go in and do that. Um, my favourite country modules. Um, my favourite is Devel. Or Devel. Um, basically, it just gives me lots of visibility of objects. Pretty much every site has got Devel um, installed in it. Um, views. Um, it's quick to gather data um, and write custom fields and filter handlers. They're pretty uh, cool as well. So obviously if um, a filter doesn't work the way that you want it to work and manipulate a query, then you can go in and create your own, which is pretty awesome. Um, BBO, so writing custom actions. Uh, the membership entity, as hard as building the custom CRM has been, um, the membership entity module is actually really good in like, managing different membership types. Um, the migrate module, so I'd be pretty lost without the migrate module, migrating data from site to site, so um, that's definitely a must. Um, and rules, writing your own custom events and actions, that's pretty good as well. Um, so, yeah. so the, um, the things that I've learned um, is that it is really important to understand the client and uh, I don't mind talking to them. So um, using like Basecamp at work, we have Basecamp just to manage our project, clients on one side, we're on the other side. Um, and as a developer, I'm not scared to pick up the phone and just ring the client if I've got a question. And nine, nine times out of 10, they're happy to talk to us um, about, the, about any issues that I have or any questions. Um, and they've rang me as well, just with any issues that they've had anything spotted anything. Um, planning is a must, so um, I've learned the hard way in working on projects, even though for my first project it went smoothly. Um, yeah, it's definitely a must. Um, and I think the thing that like I've taken is that I won't write a piece of code until I know what what needs to be done basically. So um, my approach is to not write a single line of code until I know exactly what it, whatever it needs to be, needs to be like, yeah. Um, until I know what the client wants, basically, so just write in comments, things like that. Um, comment in your code before you write it, even if it's just for a method, you should try it. Um, it's quite good, and um, basically talking to myself, which sounds crazy or, or something, 
just like an object on your desk or a colleague, all right, if you explain to that person the problem, um, you'll come up with the answer yourself before you've even finished explaining it. So, and um, you just save so much time um, on that, and that's one thing I've learned. And when developing a site, um, I keep in mind the broken window theory, which is a theory that was um, devised by sociology scientists, which basically said that in a city, if you've got loads of street buildings with smashed windows, that um, vandalism is more likely to increase because nobody cares. Whereas, so you can apply that same principle in coding. So if I keep my code neat, tidy, document it, comment it, then I feel better about it and it feel like, um, yeah, I'll want to keep care of it, if that makes sense. And the next person who comes along, if it's Mark who needs to sort out the support issue, then it's, he's not going to just dive into a complete bomb site. <laughs> and the chances are, or he's going to be like, oh God, I'll just do whatever, and that's it, and dive out. Um, so that's like, um, yeah, that's it basically. Um, has anyone got any questions? Yeah? yeah. When, you, when you first started in Drupal, like day one, yeah. and you had no Drupal experience, what was your sort of first step? Was it being mentored by experience? Yeah. yeah, pretty much. Being mentored by um, Lee, our lead developer, he basically taught me the concepts of Drupal. Um, I also used the um, Drupal Apprenticeship Program, which was basically like a document which just went over loads of different tasks um, that you could basically um, just do to complete a basic website. Um, but yeah, I was basically mentored and um, just learning on the job as well, really. I mean, I don't, I mean, at the beginning, I purposely put my qualifications because they mean nothing to me. The real learning starts when you're obviously in the working environment. And yes, I do apply some of the experience that I've learned from that, but it mainly starts when you're working. Uh, so, yeah. Anybody else have any questions? No? Uh, there's one more thing. Uh, I'm a work hydrant for hiring, so if you're interested in um, <laughs> remote development or anything like that, then come and see us and leave us your con contact details. I do have one question. Yeah. Um, you wrote uh, one of the most important learning. Sorry, you said. Yeah. One of the most important learnings was understanding the client's ethos. Yeah. How did you go through that process, and what was the challenge? It's basically asking myself. You know, the client's basically wanting a website to do whatever, but you know, what's the reason for it? How's this going to affect their job? If you know, if you know what I mean. So, if you're writing a view to basically display a list of users or whatever, you know, how's it going to be? I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to understand, like put out there, but it's I suppose it's giving them more value and thinking. Trying not to think tunnel vision, right, okay, I need to do this task or whatever. It's thinking, right, okay, well, what would the client actually want if I was in their position and I was using what I'm building? You know, I see a list of people, but I'd probably want to export that list into a CSV file. Basic things like that, it's just giving them extra functionality, extra avenue, and just making sure that, like in the presentation before about usability, just making sure that, you know, they can use a site and not use terminology like that. Because, I mean, what the guy was saying before is Boolean fields and stuff like that, that's fine for me, but obviously to a user it's not, you know what I mean? So it's sort of like getting into the mindset and not 